Images on film? Yes. But more importantly, this is information. Visual information as it becomes tactical intelligence. Imagery intelligence. Such imagery holds vastly more information per square centimeter than pages of printed words can ever tell. There are today so many and varied circumstances that affect us, conditions that are ever changing. And we must know in advance myriad details of their potential for destabilizing peaceful conditions anywhere. We cannot know when or where the United States Army may be called upon to fight. The geography or climate in which political military conditions may degenerate from static to tension to full combat. But we do know for a certainty that advanced knowledge of an enemy can be gained through effective intelligence systems. And that intelligence preparation of future battlefields can offset to some extent an enemy's potential for surprise. We know the massive lethality of weapons that are now in the arsenals of volatile, unstable political military entities. In the event of conflict, we can expect to face swift, extremely violent forces that by all estimates will outnumber us, have us outgunned, and outmanned. Yet we can overcome the odds with foreknowledge of the enemy, with careful planning and intensive training, so that under any circumstances, in any geography, we can win the land battle. Foreknowledge of enemy capabilities and activities is derived from our all-source national intelligence community. There are many systems that are focused on this problem. Deep behind an enemy's rear area, high-flying fixed-wing reconnaissance aircraft provide broad area coverage of the enemy environment. In the immediacy of the combat situation, close-range observation and detection is by human intelligence sensors, the sight and hearing of soldiers mounted and unmounted. There are also unattended ground sensors that report proximity and passage of an opposing force through reading his magnetic, seismic, thermal, or acoustic footprint. And ground surveillance radar that detect opposing force vehicular and personnel movement. In the area near the close-in combat sensors, there are mid-range areas of enemy maneuvers where tactical intelligence must be timely, where the preparation and movement of the enemy must be seen by our tactical commanders. Covering these areas and filling the gaps comprise the main mission requirements of the OV-1D Mohawk surveillance system. It is the primary system available and capable of providing near real-time imagery intelligence from an aerial platform for sustained periods. It extends the tactical commander's eyes to see into the enemy's most restricted, most protected areas, beyond the forward edge of the battle area. When enemy activity has been detected and localized by the Mohawk system, the information can then be used to cue other intelligence assets humint or sigint to further define the activity. From its introduction as a surveillance and reconnaissance aircraft in the early 1960s, the OV-1 has been on the move in exercises and supporting Cold War operations in Korea and Europe. It met the intelligence gathering challenges in Southeast Asia. This varied and rigorous operational employment of the OV-1B SLAR and OV-1C IR systems brought about improved sensor systems and airframe modifications, which have culminated in today's OV-1D Mohawk surveillance system. The OV-1D Mohawk system is a very special packaging of airborne sensors, two panoramic cameras, one five-position framing camera, and either an infrared or IR system, or 
a side-looking airborne radar, or SLAR system. The infrared and side-looking airborne radar are the primary sensors and are completely interchangeable so that one or the other may be installed in the aircraft selected for the mission. Improved onboard imagery displays for real-time readout of IR and, as shown here, near real-time SLAR information have been incorporated. Ease of image interpretation in both the onboard SLAR display and on all recorded imagery has been accomplished by an automatic data annotation system. In order to improve the navigational and system capabilities of the Mohawk, an inertial navigation system, or INS, was added. Survivability has been enhanced by added defensive electronic countermeasures equipment. The sum total of improvement modifications and additions have contributed to the prime characteristics of the Mohawk system. Responsive, reliable, survivable. It has the range and staying power needed to extend the vision of tactical intelligence. Organizationally, the Mohawk unit is a semi-independent element of a combat electronic warfare intelligence organization. The unit is the Combat Intelligence Company, Aerial Surveillance, assigned to the Corps. Each Mohawk company has 18 OV-1 Mohawk aircraft with IR and SLAR system allocation commensurate with anticipated mission requirements. All 18 aircraft have two panoramic cameras and one framing camera. Rapid changes of SLAR or IR can reconfigure the Mohawk to meet changing search and intelligence requirements. The three cameras may be reloaded or removed and reinstalled within a few minutes. Each company will include ground sensor terminals or GSTs for receiving near real-time imagery signals from the side-looking airborne radar during SLAR missions. Secure voice communications may be linked between operational Mohawks and the ground sensor terminal as well. Generally, the G2 exercises staff supervision of the Mohawk unit through the tactical surveillance officer, usually referred to as the TSO. When the S2 at a battalion has called for surveillance of enemy movement in a broad sector, the TSO and his tactical surveillance NCO go to work on it. The Mohawk's capabilities for handling missions in deteriorating weather and night operations dictate their selection for reconnaissance and surveillance. This sector can best be covered by the Mohawks that are located here. The Tactical Surveillance NCO coordinates this request for the Mohawks to perform a pre-planned standoff SLAR surveillance mission. In response to the battalion commander's request for support, communicated through requesting channels to the Corps, essential elements of information needed have been determined. At the same time, other commanders at battalion, division, and Corps need a current look at possible enemy preparations for a major thrust. They must see his moves in time to concentrate forces in advance. Consolidation of missions must always be considered. At the Mohawk unit, the intelligence requirements mean careful selection and combination of OV-1D surveillance equipment options. The camera system, which can be mounted in either SLAR or IR configured aircraft, consists of two panoramic cameras and one framing camera. One panoramic camera is mounted in the nose of the Mohawk and covers 180 degrees from left to right forward of the aircraft, while the second panoramic camera is mounted in the belly of the aircraft and covers 180 degrees from left horizon to right horizon beneath the aircraft. These panoramic cameras are excellent at all altitudes, including low level. The belly-mounted framing camera, which has four lens cones interchangeable on the ground, is capable of vertical and left or right oblique positioning controlled from the cockpit. The camera systems are excellent for point targets, route reconnaissance, and area coverage, where overflight of the target area is possible. 
They aid in the identification of infiltration routes and counter-reconnaissance elements, as well as our own OPSEC efforts, such as camouflage, traffic flow, command post location, and unit security. The SLAR is used to locate and monitor vehicular traffic at considerable distances. It operates in three distinctly different ranges, 25 kilometers, 50 kilometers, and 100 kilometers, to either or both sides, all measured from the flight path of the aircraft. Its standoff capability enables the aircraft to remain well behind the FIBA and still provide coverage deep into enemy-held territory. Another feature of the SLAR system is its range delay capability. This enables the operator to select certain portions of terrain to be covered or mapped. In the 25 kilometer range mode, mapping can be delayed in 10 kilometer increments out to a maximum of 60 kilometers. In the 50 kilometer range mode, mapping can be delayed in 10 kilometer increments out to a maximum of 50 kilometers. The maximum range of 100 kilometers cannot be exceeded. By using range delay, the operator can concentrate on a smaller area and benefit from the map scale produced. The infrared detecting set, or IR, senses the thermal differences in the infrared radiation given off by all objects and accurately displays these differences pictorially in real time on a cathode ray tube in the cockpit and simultaneously on film for later more detailed interpretation. IR is a totally passive system, but must fly directly over the target to obtain the intelligence information. The system is excellent for night use, but works equally well during the day. IR is effectively used for flank and rear area security, counter reconnaissance, and in assisting the commander's OPSEC. In addition to the surveillance equipment, the OV-1 aircraft carries a broad spectrum of two-way communication and navigation equipment. The inertial navigation system, a passive system, supplies navigation instruments with heading and distance information and is coupled to the data annotation system and the recorder processor viewer to provide information such as location, ground speed, heading, and time. The Mohawk abounds in safety devices, from ejection seats to equipment fault sensors to radar warning devices. Extensive coordination and pre-planning have been conducted to attain maximum suppression of the enemy, but terrain flying and evasive navigation are also necessary to ensure avoidance of enemy air defense artillery and electronic detection. If it is absolutely necessary to penetrate high threat airspace, all means of coordinated support and crew skills are needed to ensure the Mohawk survivability even by flying below or around known air defense systems. The Mohawk SLAR system is an active system and therefore is susceptible to enemy electronic interference during operation. Electronic warfare jamming can be countered to some extent by changing frequencies. Onboard electronic countermeasure systems effective against radar and infrared assist the OV-1 and its crew in accomplishing the mission. The reflexes and senses of the flight crew, the Mohawk pilot and technical observer, must be quick and accurate. Their visual observations augment the sensor surveillance systems, producing combat information as well as complex tactical intelligence. In the cockpit, the technical observer has before him a continuous flow of near real-time imagery. Fixed terrain and moving objects to one side of the flight path are displayed. This near real-time presentation is recorded on film, both in the aircraft and in the ground sensor terminal, which speeds the imagery interpretation process. The operator can determine the location of moving targets. The SLAR has identified a continuous movement indicating extensive activity 50 kilometers into the enemy area and intermittent movers along a known supply route. Moving target indicators could suggest pre-positioning of fuel stores and movement of reinforcements. 
Such observations can be transmitted from a ground sensor terminal for joint services immediate use. Even though the OV-1 Mohawk is not a forward air controller, it nevertheless provides real-time in-flight combat information and intelligence indicators to tactical air elements. And to combat units along the forward edge of the battle area, while at the same time communicating current indicators to tactical commanders who forge the combined arms team and maneuver forces for the attack. Even though the Mohawk is primarily engaged in imagery intelligence collection, it can collect electromagnetic information through defensive EW equipment. And along with other collection sources, feed it all into the Electronic Warfare Intelligence Operations Center for integration and fusion into the all-source intelligence product, which supports major decisions to concentrate forces in neutralizing enemy positions and interdicting supply routes. If absolutely necessary, to confirm or deny previously reported or urgently needed information, an OV-1 would be tasked to fly close to the FIBA. This aircraft and crew are flying such a mission, a photographic mission, to confirm or deny an enemy infiltration detected by ground surveillance. To survive this type of mission, the crew must use every conceivable means of avoiding detection, low-level navigation, evasive flight maneuvers, radio discipline, EW procedures. Echo Control, Raccoon 3, Bravo route. Roger, Raccoon 3. Echo Control, Raccoon 3, we've taken a hit. My right engine secure. Request clears to Thompson Field. Roger, Raccoon 3, clear to Thompson. We'll notify crash alert. In order to ensure mission accomplishment, the Mohawk Company launches its standby aircraft to continue the mission as requested by the TSO. It is airborne in only minutes. Thompson Tower, Raccoon 3, emergency. Request straight in approach. Roger 3, cleared for straight in. Alerted to the emergency, the entire Mohawk team springs into action to ensure crew safety and mission success. Even though there have been transmissions of combat information during the mission and queuing of tactical elements and other intelligence systems, return of the abundant store of detailed imagery in the onboard film cassettes is crucial. handling of recorded data increases its usefulness. Intelligence information is perishable as time overtakes it. Mobile and transportable photographic processing laboratories and tactical imagery interpretation facilities are an integral part of the imagery intelligence interpretation system. A wet negative readout procedure allows imagery interpretation of the recorded information within minutes after landing. The tactical surveillance officer and tactical surveillance NCO have now received intelligence from both SLAR and photo missions and are consolidating the information for dissemination to appropriate elements. The immediacy of imagery information enhances the timeliness of the intelligence process while providing information collected during the mission to the commander and contributing to the total intelligence effort. This will give tactical commanders visibility well beyond the FIBA into the enemy's logistic support, communication, and maneuver areas. The commander is thus able to put together a combined arms team in time, carefully matched to the immediate and future battle requirements. A 
are responsive and reliable imagery intelligence system. Day, night, in all weather conditions, the OV-1 Mohawk is a fully integrated battlefield surveillance system, organic to core. The OV-1 Mohawk supplies the Army field commander with vital information in an instantly readable and applicable form because its product is imagery intelligence. Imagery indicating enemy strength, disposition, and activity. Responsive to the tactical commander, the system provides intelligence needed to find, fix, and neutralize the enemy force before he arrives at the FIBA. The OV-1 supports the overall intelligence preparation of the battlefield and the forging of an effective combined arms team. The Mohawk is a today imagery intelligence system that will be available well into the future. It is at work now in Alaska, Korea, and Europe. When called upon, it will continue to respond to the commander's requirements wherever the need for tactical reconnaissance and surveillance exists.